Hey, what is up guys? Jackson here with the Toasty Bros. And today, we're gonna find out if dual core gaming is still possible in 2019 with this G3258. Hope you guys enjoy. Do you need help with YouTube? Are you ready to take the next step and make your channel bigger? All right, well listen up. I got just a thing for you. It's called TubeBuddy. It's an extension tailored for YouTube and it offers all kinds of tools. One of my favorite is the Tag Suggester. And another one of my favorite is the Best Time to Upload feature. But that's only to name a few, so go check it out for yourself in the link down below. So many of you guys know this really epic processor, it's Intel's dual core. And that's what makes this video special is that it's not just like an i3 that hyper threads, no. This is two true dual cores, and so we're going to kind of put it to the test and see if we overclock it with this really nice little air cooler from Deepcool here. Can we actually play games in 2019? So to go over the specs real quick for you guys, we have of course the G3258 dual core from Intel. And to cool that, we have the Deepcool Gamax 400. I know I did not say Gamax. To house the actual processor and everything else, we have the H81M, and no, it's not uh, whatever this box is. It's actually the H81M. This is one of few boards that are really well compatible with this dual core that'll let us overclock the crap out of it hopefully. We have a good old RX 584 gig so that we know we're not gonna get held back in video performance at all. And this thing was really cheap as well, which we need for this build because this is also a budget build while it's also a test build. To power this system, we have a thermal take, yeah, thermal take pure power 600 watt. Just kind of a random power spot we had laying around, but it seems to work. It's a bit of a spaghetti monster, but you know, it's no big deal. It's a little bit worn out and everything, but it seems to work good, so we'll use it. We have eight gigs, two four gig sticks of DDR3 at 1600 megahertz, so it'll work just fine for this build. We have a really cheap A Data 120 gig SSD. Oh no, did I just do this again to myself? All right guys, I'm uh, really embarrassed to admit this, but uh, before we go any further, if you guys watched my $175 budget gaming build, um, I managed to squeeze an R9 380 that was a double fan just like this into this Roswell case. Well, this Roswell case is considered a micro ATX or even mini ITX, and it, it, it doesn't fit these cards at all. Like, I'll even show you guys if you don't believe me, right? So we have no motherboard, nothing in here, okay? So... You can do this, right? Like, kind of squeeze it in there. Obviously, once the board's in, though, this PCI bracket smacks the board, first of all. And then once you guys to see, now that we actually have it in place, so you see the PCI slots where it lines up. Look how there's, there's literally no room for me to lift up because of this hard drive cage. And if you look at where this is at, the motherboard's higher <laughs> than this uh, bracket here. So, like, for me to fit the R9 one, I had to literally... It took me about an hour, an hour and a half, because I had to bend this... I had to unscrew spots in the motherboard to take this fan out. I want to say I had to take the rear fan out even. Um, and I had to remove a bunch of other stuff I had already put on because the graphics card is usually what I do last, what most people do last, I guess. And yeah, I I'm not going through this struggle again. We will continue once we find out the verdict. So the Roswell case was fun while it lasted, even though we didn't even get any parts in it. But you know what? We got a comparable upgrade. So this, guys, is the DIY BG01 PC case. And... This one, yes, is a little bit bigger than the Roswell case. This one's actually considered a full mid-tower, but it does look a lot sleeker. The side panel is bigger and clearer, and the good news is it is still in the same price range as the Roswell case. But the even better news is it's gonna fit this freaking double fan graphics card. So I'm gonna use this opportunity to my advantage. We have one missing fan right here. And when I say missing, I mean it only comes with two fans up front and then one blue one in the back. So I got this little extra blue fan line around that I'm really tired of looking at. So we're going to throw that right here to add a little bit of extra light. You're a rebel, getting into trouble. You are kind of like a fire, like a fire, like a fire. Unpredictable, so original. You are never backing down. Yeah, this, uh, this motherboard is definitely really goofy for this case, and then I realized one other issue. I guess the fan should probably be on this side because there's, look at the uh, clearance of the two fans here. So I'm going to swap the fans over real quick.
suffering, kind of ignorant. You don't care what people say, people say, people say. I'm going crazy for you, baby. Don't know how you make it me feel this way. What can I say? That's what I like about you. guys so for benchmarking I decided to keep things a little bit interesting and actually test it overclocked and non overclocked so first we have non overclocked we're playing Fortnite 1920 by 1080 high settings everything and it was actually really impressive for a freaking dual core in 2019 playing Fortnite at high settings and it was actually getting a pretty constant 60 FPS except for some minor frame drops here and there. Now once we actually overclock this thing you'll see that most of the frame drops went away and also we have a little bit higher overall FPS and this thing like I said it was actually very very playable. Not to mention it has a great upgrade path you can actually look on eBay and whatnot and actually find maybe a fourth gen i7 or fourth gen i5 processor and throw it into this build and actually have a really good and still overclockable build. The next game we tested was PUBG. So I kind of goofed on this test. There wasn't really much going on in the non-overclocked version, which I think kind of gave us a higher FPS value. The only thing I really did to add any action was shoot, but there was no one in the area or anything. Now, once we actually overclock it, I dropped straight into school where there was probably 20 plus people. There's a lot of gunfight going on. I myself was in some of the gunfight. And I think that that kind of lost us some FPS, basically making it look like it almost did worse when I overclocked it. Um, if anything, I would say the test was maybe about the same. Uh, I would think that the overclocked one should be a little bit better, but I think mainly was because I didn't have consistency there. And then the last game we tested was The Forest. Now this is a pretty easy to run game nowadays, but it does have really nice looking graphics. So we completely maxed it out, 1920 by 1080, and we were getting a constant 50, 60 FPS when we had it not overclocked, which like I said with all the other tests, really impressive for a dual core. But once we actually overclocked it, we managed to actually hold a 70 to 80 FPS constant and we didn't really have many lag spikes like we did before. So ran a lot better and looked absolutely amazing. So like I said, this was kind of like a test to see, can we still game on a dual core in 2019? And I'm going to say the answer is yes. You guys might beg to differ because, you know, it is pushing it, but it is doable. I played games and you guys watched me play them. But let me know in the comments down below what you guys thought. And also at only $268 for all the parts, it was pretty much a budget build as well. So we hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys later.